Hey guys, and welcome to week eight of Snoozers and Losers. We are ready to get started. I'm joined here by Tony from Fantasy Quick Hits and Kyle from Boom Bust Fantasy Football. Uh, let's just jump right into it and talk about our Snoozers and Losers. Um, let's Sounds begin good. with um, quarterbacks, guys. Uh, Tony, what quarterback you want to start with first? I think I'm going to jump right in with my quarterback snoozer of the week, which is Jameis Winston. Um, he he has really looked very, very sharp. Uh, he looked great Monday night. I, I love the fact that Sean Payton seems to be opening up the playbook for him a little bit more. We saw him take several deep shots. A couple of them just missed. We had a couple of drop passes uh, on, on, on Monday night. Uh, they, they, they now appear to be back on track with getting the ball into Kamara's hands. We saw Kamara with, I think, 10 receptions on the night. And, and this this is really a revenge game from Jameis Winston against what has mostly been a, a um, you know, a very soft Tampa Bay pass defense. So I really look for Jameis Winston to, to keep this momentum and to, to post some solid fantasy numbers. He's also a, a, a potential target for – uh, for DFS. Yeah, I agree. I like that pick. Yeah, I like it. Tampa Bay soft for everybody except the Bears. <laughs> that and, and and don't forget against this Tampa Bay offense, New Orleans is going to have to put points on the board. Oh yeah. So you know I do expect them to to open things up a little bit more for Jameis and um, you know I'm expecting big things from him this Sunday. Kyle, who you got? Um, let's, let's actually jump into my QB loser of the week, Mr. Matt Ryan. Um, I know he was a popular streamer this last week against Miami. Um, didn't even look great against them in a great matchup this week. They play Carolina. Matt Ryan is just not the guy anymore that he used to be. Um, so I like, I'm not, I'm not touching Matt Ryan against Carolina. And chasing what was, I guess, I guess a pretty decent matchup last week in a fill spot and by apocalypse. Um, definitely not touching him this week, though. No, I'm not, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you against, especially against that Carolina defense. And their the Carolina offense has not looked very good. So game script could really set itself up for Atlanta not need to do as much as far as their passing game is concerned. So I, I, I like the pick. I'm just disappointed. Exactly. <laughs> All righty. Um, I'm going to go with one of my picks this week, and that's going to be Sam Darnold. Um, which column? Which column? Um, surprise. I'm actually going to put him in my snoozer column this week, and it's because of his matchup uh, against Atlanta. I know he was a popular streamer this last week uh, with Bipocalypse and let everyone down. So um, I He's got to get it together at some point. And if it's going to come back to him, it has to be against Atlanta. If if he doesn't get it back this week, I'm giving up on Sam Darnold probably. But I feel like if there's a time to get back in that groove that he had at the beginning of the season, it's against Atlanta. So I'm going to put him in my snoozer column and, and cross my fingers. He makes me nervous. <laughs> oh, it makes me nervous. But only I two teams. Not. Only only two teams on a bye this week. I'm not sure I agree with starting him. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. I'm not sure I want Darnold in my starting lineup. But um, but I but I, I I get your point, and I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens on Sunday. Um, I will pick another similar guy who's maybe been on the opposite side, and that's Tua. Uh, Tagliova, and so he really uh, the past couple of weeks seemed to have gotten himself on track uh, coming back from from his uh, from his injury. But this is going to be a bit of a different spot for him up against this Buffalo defense. Uh, they'll be playing in Buffalo. He still is without Devontae Parker. I know Preston Williams um, looks like he might be another game time decision this week. So with Waddle and Gasicki, I just don't think they've got enough going on in that passing game against this very, very, very tough Buffalo defense, especially on the on that that you know on the um, the passing side of, of of the ball. So I don't expect big, big things from Tua, and if you have other options this week, you, you definitely want to keep him out of your lineup. I agree with that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, and by the way, I think that also goes for. 
uh, his receivers as well. I, I'm not expecting good things from Waddle. If Devontae Parker is healthy, if if Preston Williams is healthy, I'm not expecting very big things from this from this passing offense this week in Buffalo. Yeah. Coming off a well, bye. Yeah. yeah. A well rested yeah. Buffalo healthy. defense. Absolutely. Exactly. Kyle, yeah. this is your next um, one. I'm gonna jump in here and my snoozer QB of the week is Kirk Cousins. They're playing uh Dallas. And I don't think I really need to say much more, if I'm being honest. That matchup is just too good. They're, I mean, they're coming out of, they're both coming out of a bye. Both teams are coming out of a bye, so there's no real, I guess, um, advantage to Minnesota in that department. But um, that Dallas defense, I mean, yeah, Trevon Diggs can make plays, but he's not really a shutdown. I still expect a pretty good game from Justin Jefferson, but. Um, I think Thielen and Dalvin Cook are just going to be going crazy on this defense. So get your Kirk Cousins in there. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, Dallas D's been playing good, but, man, that, that offense has so many weapons on it. It's going to be a true challenge for that Dallas defense, and I think uh, Kirk Cousins is going to have a pretty good day. So surprise, surprise, I put Sam Darnold in my snoozer column, and – Aaron Rodgers left up here, and I'm putting him in the loser column. It seems total opposite of uh, what you would typically think. But Aaron Rodgers playing against Arizona this week and also going to be missing Devontae Adams and Alan Lazard, that's not looking pretty up there. Maybe Aaron Jones and, and A.J. Dillon get some good work. If, if anything, Aaron Rodgers probably going to have to be dumping it off to them quite a bit. I do think it's a get-right get, get, get right game for Aaron Jones. Yes. Yeah. I mean, look for him to take over that offense on, on Thursday night. You might even see a lot of Dylan might be a decent flex if you're in a running back crunch. Yep. Like, I really think they're going to run heavy. Well, uh, Aaron Jones could be the leading receiver Thursday night. That's what I was thinking. A lot of dump-offs there. Very yeah. possible. Very possible. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Speaking of running backs, let's move on to them. Uh, Kyle, what running backs you got? So my snoozer running back of the week is actually Joe Mixon versus the Jets because that defense is atrocious. You start anybody and everybody you can against the Jets. Um, I really expect him to have a really, really big game against them this week. I mean, they can't stop anything on defense. So get your Joe Mixon in there and then sell him after. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. He should – he should eat against them, as yeah. everyone else does. I'll go ahead and go with my uh, running back loser of the week, and that's going to be Daryl Williams. I'm going to place him in my loser column this week. I think that they're going to have to get Mahomes going. They're playing the Giants. Another good opportunity to get someone going. Running backs in Kansas City have been unreliable anyways. So I'm really not trusting because that's not how their offense works. So I'm just not expecting – huge things out of Daryl Williams this week. I think expectations are going to be a little too high going against the Giants, and I think we should temper those back. Uh, I don't think he's going to have a great game. I think it's going to be Mahomes lighting it up this week, trying to get back on track. Right. Yep. Tony, who you got this week? I think I'm going to start with my uh, – let's, let's start with my running back, loser of the week, and, and that's going to be Leonard Fournette. He, this New Orleans defense is uh, really surprisingly tough against the run. And losing teams have had a difficult time getting their running game on track against this Saints defense, while their uh, passing defense has, has not been as good. And look for Tom Brady to to go off this week um, against the Saints, and and I expect Fournette to kind of be brought back to earth a little bit. What's what is nice about Fournette is he has been averaging over the past two weeks over twenty touches uh, a game. So you still expect him to get some volume. I just wouldn't expect him to to post some uh, you know some quality fantasy numbers. I think unless he plunges himself into the end zone. Uh, you could be a little bit disappointed in Fournette this week against that Saints defense. I agree with that. You're definitely hoping for a TD from him this week. And New, New Orleans is in the top five as far as yeah, they're tough against the run. So they're, they're very, very tough against the run. Absolutely. Yep. All right, so 
it's hard to believe looking at the three running backs we have left in our players bank that one of them is still a loser and it's my loser and it's Nick Chubb coming back from an injury and also playing Pittsburgh like no thank you <laughs> I really like honestly that's that's just a recipe for disaster also I think Dearness Johnson being healthy and playing so well last week will probably get quite a bit of work this week. I think they might might work Chubb back in slowly coming back from that injury. So, yeah, I'm I'm staying away from Chubb this week. No, I agree with all those points. I think coming back from this calf injury, I don't know if he's 100%, so they might have him on a pitch count. So look for him to gradually work back into a, a full workload. Also, I, I don't think we're going to see Baker. So – um, if it doesn't load well for the passing game, they might be able to load the box a little bit more to stop Nick Chubb. And Dearness Johnson just looked spectacular last mm-hmm. week. So they don't really need to rush Nick Chubb back. Uh, I know if you, if you have Nick Chubb, you drafted him high, so you're probably anxious to get him back in your lineup. And I'm not telling you not to start him, but you do have to think temper your expectations. I, I agree. I, I would also have him in a loser column. And we've talked about this before, too, but Nick Chubb is one of those running backs who is really touchdown dependent because he's not utilized at all in the passing game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, there's some concerns there this week against Pittsburgh. Agree. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go on to my next guy, and that's going to be Alvin Kamara. And I'm putting him, obviously, in the snoozer uh, column here. Um yeah, Alvin yeah. Kamara going against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay has not been good. It's not a good running back matchup because everyone has to throw against them to just keep up with them, right? So it's not a good running back matchup normally. But Alvin Kamara is not your normal running back. Uh, he struggled this season uh, getting receptions that we're used to Alvin Kamara getting. They haven't been throwing him the ball until the last two weeks where they've been targeting him out of the backfield the way we expect them to target Alvin Kamara coming out of the backfield. And I see that happening a lot again this game, uh, checking down the Alvin Kamara and uh, him collecting a lot of uh, receptions and just racking up those PPR points. I think Alvin Kamara is going to be that exception to the typical running back against Tampa Bay, and I think he has a good week this week. I agree with that. I mean, you saw Miles Gaskin go – 10 catches for how many yards and touchdowns against Tampa Bay like that. Kamara could do even better than that. I'm on the same page with you guys. Um, My my snoozer might seem like an obvious choice. DeAndre Swift has been killing it. But I want to put him here tonight because I want to talk about him a little bit. Not only is a snoozer, but but this guy is really kind of moving himself into another tier uh, uh, as far as his – Weekly status and and rest of season, he, he's proven himself to be matchup proof, heavily utilized in this Detroit Lion offense, and he has a spectacular um, game this week against the uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles are one of the worst defenses against the run. As a matter of fact, there's only one defense that's worse against the run than the Eagles, and that's the Jets. So they are number two. <laughs> In terms of matchups, and 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 Goff just seem just doesn't seem to be able to get himself on track. Um, that passing game is really struggling, so they're going to lean heavily on Swift against a very soft run defense in this Philadelphia Eagles squad. Uh, big things from from Swift, and he he really is the type of running back who could finish Week Eight as the number one overall running back. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I love him this week against Philly. Agreed. Yeah, I think that's a great matchup for him. So, um, all right, guys, we are halfway through. I'm just going to uh, give this board a little bit bigger look for everyone so that they can kind of see who we've got going so far. Um, let us know if you disagree with any of our picks here. Just leave a comment for us. And All right, guys, now let's go into some wide receiver here. And I'll actually go first. Uh, I picked Emmanuel Sanders. And he's actually going into my week eight snoozer column. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders playing against Miami, a beautiful matchup. And Emmanuel Sanders has been putting up tremendous points. Um, Turned out to be a really good fantasy asset. And I think it just continues against what's a pretty simple uh, matchup against Miami. So um, I don't know if that's a big surprise pick right there, but 
um, I'm I'm starting Manuel Sanders this week. Yeah, definitely. Um, for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with my wide receiver snoozer also, and go with Mr. Adam Thielen. Um, and you know it correlates to one of my quarterback snoozers or my my quarterback snoozer of the week, Kirk Cousins, also playing Dallas. If Trevon Diggs is going to stick to anybody, it's going to be Justin Jefferson. Um, but I really think Thielen, Thielen is the type of receiver that we struggle with the most, and I think he's going to have a really big game this week. We struggled covering Thielen in the past when we've played him. Uh, I say we, Dallas. Um, so I, I really expect Thielen to kind of make that Dallas secondary look bad on Sunday. <laughs> All right, Tony, what you got? Let me uh, let me kind of maybe help balance out the uh, the columns here a little bit, and and let's go with let's go with Landry Beckham and People's <laughs> Jones, and and let's slide them right over there under Nick Chubb, probably right where they belong in that losers <laughs> column. I was gonna say right next to the oh, other sure. Brown. <laughs> yeah, I, I you know what I just think. You, you've got to stay away from the Browns' offense this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, even if you have the Ernest Johnson, you don't even know what to expect from him. So, right. you know, because he's he isn't on the list here. But but you've got to be really concerned about this Browns' offense going up against this Pittsburgh defense without Baker. Um, Although Case Keenum did look very good, and, and in many ways is is uh, is very similar style. That to, to, to Baker. As a matter of fact, I think Tomlin even said that they're preparing for the Browns uh, just like they would for Baker because he and Case Keenum are very similar in terms of their play style. So, um, but I, I just not looking for much production out of this passing offense on Sunday. So if you're looking for one receiver to play on that Browns uh, offense, you know, I would tell you to, to just stay away and, and not touch them this week. Um, look for some. Look for a better option. I mean, look. L- to be honest, Landry looked pretty good. You know, coming off IR, he, he looked he looked healthy. Um, he had eight targets, but I, I just I don't see I, I don't see him generating anything this 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 week. And and Od- Odell Beckham, I mean, he's he's borderline droppable at this point, right? So borderline. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's hard, you know. You see, you see big name guys like that, and it's hard to. It is. I've got you know. I've I have Julio Jones on one of my rosters, and I just cannot get myself to drop the guy. Yeah, same with Allen Robinson, right? It's it's just it's, it, it, yeah. It's just some of those names you see them, and it's you know hitting that drop button is very difficult to do. So yep. All right, Kyle, what you got next? All right, so my wide receiver loser of the week correlates with Tony's loser quarterback of the week, Mr. Jalen Waddle. Um, you know, same thing playing against Buffalo, very good defense. Um, Preston Devonte could be back maybe, but either way, I really don't see this offense doing anything against Bu- the Buffalo's defense coming off a bye and they're fresh. And yeah, no, thank you. And I know Tony agrees because he already said so when he was talking about Tua. So, well, the only caveat that I would add here with Waddle um, is if you're obviously we're talking about snoozers and losers for week eight, but right, right, not season if you one. know someone who might happen to have him in a dynasty league, this is a guy you want to get on your team, especially with the news coming out about Deshaun Watson, who looks like looks like they've they've consummated a deal between Houston and Miami. And I will say this too, just on Jalen Waddle and Tua is you have to wonder how that's going to play on the team. You know, that type of distraction, that type of news. Um, what does that do in the head of, of Tua? How does that play in the minds of these, you know, these offensive players and that team as a whole coming out on a, on a Tuesday, you know, just a few days before you're that's, getting ready to suit up. That's a very good point. I mean, Tua could just phone it in now. If he's like, well, they don't believe in me. Well, why should I try so hard? You know, no, it's, they got a lot of pride, and I think you know they're they're competitors. Absolutely, I, I love too. I think he's a great kid, but I do think that you know this has to men- mess with you mentally. You know, especially yeah, yeah. when you see that that deal's pretty much done. Yeah. So, yeah. Whereas yeah. Jalen Waddle's going, 
Lucas? <laughs> <laughs> I think all of Miami right now is kind of, you know, yeah. in bated breath. We're all but, real excited. But just think about what that does for his dynasty value. All right, I'm going to move on to um, my wide receiver loser for the week, and that's going to be Jerry Judy. Um, Jerry Judy's first week back here. We don't even know how much he's going to play. I've seen so many questions come in. People are asking about Jerry Judy. Do I play him this week? Do I play him this week? Uh, no, just don't play him this week. Just wait. We don't know yet. So um, not worth playing him. I know they're playing against Washington and licking your lips against that defense. Who isn't right? So, But just not yet. I guess I'm going to wrap up the uh, the, the wide receiver position. and Bring, you can, bring it home. You can already see where Pittman is headed. He's going to slide himself right over into that snoozer column. Uh, big game Monday night against the the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, you know, four, he had only four targets, but he was able to rein in all four targets for uh, 105 yards and a touchdown. I mean, obviously we saw, if you watched the game, Wentz did go deep to him a few times, really was looking at him heavy. He is the number one receiver in this Indianapolis offense. Now, not quite sure what what's going to happen with with ty uh sunday so if ty comes back in it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic works out but ty just cannot keep himself on the field this guy cannot stay healthy and so i don't really look for Pittman to let go of this number one role in this offense wentz has been better the past few weeks he, he's looked much sharper he seems to be doing uh a, 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 a better job managing this offense and, and getting that football out. So I, I, I like Pittman in this matchup. <clears throat> um, he's going up against Tennessee. Expect them to have to put points on the board. Tennessee, you know, is going to score. Yeah. So um, I do expect Pittman to have a nice game against Tennessee this, uh, this Sunday. He's my, one of, he's my wide receiver snoozer of the week. I like cool. it. I like it Perfect. a lot. Uh, let's go on to tight ends. Let's see what we got going here, guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and go first uh, for tight end here, and I'm just going to continue with the theme. I'm just going to throw this Dolphins <laughs> player over here in the loser column. Uh, they're playing that Buffalo defense, and yeah, I'm just not liking that. I'm not a huge Gasicki fan anyways, but going against that Buffalo's defense, I think we've already kind of covered a lot of the reasons. Uh, why these Dolphins players are kind of being thrown in this loser's column. So I'm just going to continue that trend there. Okay. Um, seems to be fairly reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Am I next? I'm jumping in here. Am I going next? I didn't even, yeah. even ask. Go for it, Tony. Go for it, man. Yeah. So let, let me, let's go with my uh, snoozer of the week is at the tight end position. And that's Mr. Hunter Henry. Um, the, no. Can you can you can you get that? There you go. I'm trying. We'll get it right. We'll get it right. Uh, I love this. I love this matchup this week for Hunter Henry. Mac Jones. This kid is just unshakable. Uh, he looks like franchise quarterback. It's hard to believe that that he dropped to uh, to New England in the in the middle of that you know that first round in the draft. Uh, I know that there was a a lot of criticism for San Francisco trading so. He picks to get up into that number two spot and take uh, what was thought to be Mac Jones, and then of course they took Trey Lance. But Mac Jones really looks like the real deal. Um, this guy very accurate. He loves to utilize the tight end. Hunter Henry is is in what we can see as a revenge game for him, going up against this LA Charger defense. And I want to tell you this: that the um, the very best fantasy position in all of fantasy this year has been tight end against the Charger defense. Um, you love so, that. What's that? You love that. Yeah, I'm bringing some stats tonight. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, think about that for a second, that in all positions, all defenses, these, the Chargers are just um, beyond the bad against containing the tight end. So uh, don't. if I know this, you can rest assured Bill Belichick knows it. So. <laughs> Yeah. Look for him to to go heavy to, to Hunter Henry, and I do expect a big game from him this week. Yeah, I agree. That's a good with that stat. 100%. Didn't realize that. I uh, 
my snoozer of the week is Mr. Dallas Goddard. He uh, plays against Detroit, which is a fantastic matchup. Last week, last week his first week in Philly without Zach Ertz, and he has kind of a stinker. But he was fresh off the COVID list. I expect him to bounce back in a big way this week against Detroit. Uh, so if you got Dallas Goddard, get him in your lineups this week for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm I'm liking Goddard from here on out with Ertz gone. So I'm on the same page. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, my snoozer of the week, and that's gonna be Evan Ingram with the Giants. Now note that this comes with a caveat. This is only if Sterling Shepard is out. Um, if Sterling Shepard is out, I think Evan Ingram is in for a pretty decent game. He's playing against Kansas City. Um, they're gonna have to. They're gonna throw against them. That's not a great defense. I think we all know that at this point. But that would leave Evan Ingram as a top receiving option there. And uh, yeah. So again, that's the caveat. If Sterling Shepard is out, I I would play Evan Ingram in there. Okay, yeah, good. I, I agree with that if, if Shepard's out for sure. I guess I'm going to go ahead and hit my loser of the week and do right. Robert Robert Tunyon because, yeah, there's no Adams, there's no Lazard, but I like you don't want to chase these points that he got last week. Arizona is a rough matchup. I think it's going to be a run-heavy game plan, and Rodgers seems adverse to throwing to this guy for some reason. Um, but I think they'll be able to key on him more because who do they have at receiver, right? So uh, he's a loser for me this week. So so just – it's funny you, you say Tanya, and I didn't know you were going to be saying him tonight, but just has the Chargers defense against tight ends is the best spot start in, in fantasy this year. The worst spot 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 start in all of fantasy uh, this year is Arizona against tight ends. So yeah, this, is, matchup. this is a brutal matchup for tight ends, and, and I completely agree. Even uh, with I'm no, gonna, even with no receivers, yeah, do not start him against Arizona. Yeah. Don't no, do I, I I really agree, and I think this this again this is shaping up to be an Aaron Jones game. Um, expecting big big game from him on Thursday night. And I have shipped in Aaron Jones, so I'm I'm going to be rooting hard and heavy for for Aaron Jones. Um, yeah. Let me let me kind of wrap us up here with the with our last player of the evening, and that's Dalton Schultz, and he also is going to be going into that loser column. Boom! Brutal matchup against this Minnesota defense. Minnesota has been very very good against the pass. So I'm not expecting a big game from Dak, even the receivers. I don't know that I would feel comfortable putting them all in or any of them in the loser column. But uh, I, I, I think this is going to be a heavy run game for Dallas. I think they're going to lean very, very heavily on Zeke, expect Pollard to get his touches. And, and they're not going to be able to shut Dak, Dak down completely. But I do look for Schultz to, to come kind of come back down quite a bit in his overall volume and production this week against that Minnesota defense. So I know we've kind of come to expect him uh, up in that top five range and that's where he's been, but, uh, but I don't see that this week against this Minnesota defense. Awesome. Uh, so that completes that. Uh, all right, guys. So let's just say out of these snoozers and losers, let's, let's pick our overall snoozer and loser um for the week and let's just say out of everyone's that are picked here uh, out of the whole snoozers column and the whole losers column whether they were yours or not let's go with that so uh kyle who's your overall snoozer and your overall loser for the week i think my overall snoozer for the week and we'll go with dallas goddard actually because that matchup is way too good for him Coming coming off of uh, like you say a down performance when everybody expected him to go off, don't be afraid of him. The matchup is fantastic. I think he's gonna go ham this week. So yeah, Goddard's my favorite snoozer this week. Hey, who's your favorite loser? <laughs> if that's a weird way to say it. 
uh, my favorite loser. That is kind of a weird way to say it. Can I just say um, the Dolphins? All the Dolphins against Buffalo is my favorite loser this week. Cool. I'm I'm cool with saying that. Because that matchup is terrible, as Charles Barkley would say. I know it's a football. <laughs> sh- I know it's a football show, but still, it's terrible. That is terrible. Um. So I'm a little disappointed just because um, I also wanted to put Goddard as my overall snoozer. So I actually you can pick him too. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with that. Um, I I think Dallas Dallas Goddard's going to have a great week. So I'm going to put him as my as my snoozer there because I think people are maybe a little bit uh, cold feet after last week, and you shouldn't be. Um, my my overall loser for the week is going to be. Aaron Rodgers. And that's just because that's a that's a name that you shouldn't think of when it comes to a loser. Um, you covered up one of the not, dolphins, guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so that's just who I'm going with this week. He's in a really tough situation, and uh, I I would not play Aaron Rodgers. All right, Tony, what do you got? Well, I mean. There are a lot of players here that I really like. I mean, the reason why I brought DeAndre Swift up is because I just see him um, exceeding where he is even in the rankings. Typically, he's in that 10 to 15 range, and I see him really as a top five running back. But I'm going to kind of throw you a curveball here, and you're not expecting this because I didn't give you this guy's name. But if we're going to go with who my snoozer of the week is, I'm going to give you a guy who's not on the list. So this is a freebie. For all of you, all of you who hung in there to the very end, kind of my sneaky guy DFS is Khalil Herbert. Uh, this guy has been a, a just a, a, a target monster without David Montgomery. 18 carries like last week, 100 yards, five targets, five catches, 33 yards. I'm going to I expect a lot more of that this week against that San Francisco defense, who was fairly soft against Jonathan Taylor. So I don't know if you have a player card on him, but. There we go. Look at this. I love it. Yeah, Khalil Herbert. That's my sleep. That's my sleeper of the week. All right, hit us with that loser of the week, man. Me? Hit it. Yeah, yeah, hit us with that loser of the week. There are there are some guys in here that that still might surprise. I think Aaron Rodgers again. Aaron Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones has a a, a, um, a, a Kamara type night. 10 catches, you know, 80 yards, two touchdowns. That helps That helps Aaron, Aaron Rodgers' numbers, Matt Ryan. I think the guys that I'm going to kind of just follow your lead, Kyle, and I'm just going to go with the Cleveland Browns offense. There you go. I was, I was hoping, hoping you would do that, it's, actually. It's an <laughs> obvious. And, you know, I think we're going to stay away from Dolphins. We're going to stay away from the Browns and just kind of keep it simple. So, uh, I don't have anybody in left field for my losers. I think I'm going to kind of stick with those guys. Okay, guys. So here's how we finished up right here. There's a look at the big board. And guys at the top are our biggest snoozers and losers for the week. Let us know if you agree or disagree with any of these. All right, guys. So that's all uh, we got for this week. Um, anything else that you all want to say before we sign off here? Uh, just good luck in your matchups this week. Definitely. Yeah, no doubt. Awesome, guys. Well, this was a new format this week. Let us know what you think down in the comments. We're trying out new things, trying to learn, and trying to give you what can help you the best. So let us know and like this uh, video. Subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a lot. And uh, we'll see you next week. Absolutely. appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.